Hello everybody, Tim here. Welcome back for another episode of the Chicago Northwestern Harvard Subdivision in N-Scale. And as you can see, this week it was about building on some more bench work for the layout. Um, so I had to extend the area like I talked about last time, which obviously started off, I had to make sure to find the studs to figure out then where to space uh, the dimensional pieces uh, to make sure that I didn't put a cross brace where the stud needed to go and where we're working on today this is again showing you the track plan for the layout everything you see in green the bench works already done we're focusing on this yellow area down here specifically up to where the switch is um, that's the bench work I'm going to build that's the track I'm going to lay and this is going to be as far as I get for a while and I mentioned this in last week's video because the next phase after this, it, I'm going to zoom out here so you can see, is a nice long stretch. It's like a 13, 14 foot long straight stretch of track. It's going to be really cool. But right now it's running just over open space in the basement. And I'm bringing a friend in to build, uh, to, to frame a wall. Um, so that way it's got uh, stable supporting. But that's again, that's going to take a while. So I wanted to get this built so that way I could get that done and then focus on kind of backfilling in some items on my to-do list on what I have built. Because again, as you can see me go through the clips here, I'll just say, you know, I'm, I'm getting to a pausing point, not just because of that, but just because, uh, you know, it's the school year started. I mentioned back in the earlier series, I'm a teacher. Um, so the school year started, so I'm losing a little bit of time. Uh, and I'm losing a little bit of resources. What my I'm running out of the supplies I initially purchased. In fact, I wasn't able to get the new track. Uh, I wasn't able to run the feeders because uh, I need more. Uh, I need to get more terminal strips, and so I just kind of realized, you know, what what all I was actually running out of. Um, you can see I sped up the footage here, but you can see I got it mounted. Uh, up onto the wall, um, and then after that, I went back through and added the second screw at each of the at each of the studs. You know, you can see here I'm checking to make sure it's level. Something happened after I don't know if it just settled or if I wasn't looking at the air bubble on the level correctly. Um, and you might notice it in the clip; uh, it's gonna kind of lean and sag a little bit. Um, I'll I do go back and fix that after I get all this done. I just forgot to take footage of me fixing it. It wasn't really that hard. You can see here I'm mounting it on the side. I'm joining it to the existing bench work here on the side of it. Um, and again, I'll, I'll get to it later. I uh, obviously you can see what I'm, I'm changing out. I'm getting ready to change out the bits here because I'm going to countersink uh, to make sure that the the screw heads are flush before I put the foam down. Because again, I learned the hard way on earlier construction uh, that that was problematic if you don't even if you're laying foam above it'll still it can still mess up uh, and at end scale a minor height difference can make a huge difference and so I didn't just didn't want to chance it so I'm getting some initial uh, I drilled some of the initial holes and then I went through and finished getting all that done um, and again you, you can see it better here that there's a slight lean piece to reinforce that leg yet but even still that that should have been more insufficient for the weight that was already on it so again like I said after after I finished installing uh, the half inch plywood and then after the foam uh, and after the glue dried I went back through unscrewed where I had attached it to the existing bench work uh, and then I went ahead and, and redid it so uh, but as you can see after I countersinked I went through uh, and again I can't <laughs> state more than you know than I already have uh, if you have if you have two if you have a drill and a driver it really makes it really cuts down on the time because you can just go right through and get it all done and not have to be constantly swapping bits in and out um, and I wanted to make sure that I had a nice a nice good attachment so you'll see once I once I do put the foam sheets on um, you'll see that uh, I, I found a combination of weight and also using clamps. Uh, to, to really make sure that the edges are flush. You can you can see there briefly, I, I sanded the underside of the foam because again, I'm trying to roughen up the surface to give uh, more area for the glue to grip to. Um, so once once I got done roughing that up and getting it all sanded, uh, you can see I'm doing it here with the second panel that I've got. Um, and I do like these project panels, they're pretty cheap and given given that I'm you know operating on the dimensions that I am, it makes it a lot easier than if I bought the whole eight foot sheets. Um, but again, you can, you'll see here in just a second, uh, I take the clamps 
and it really helps make sure that they're nice that these panels are nice and flush uh, just on the corners and then just throwing weight down in the other areas really gets gets the job done so you can see I, again I have no problem using whatever I can for weight so I have my old my old desktop tower um, and I use throw a bunch of books and stuff on as well uh, just to make sure that it's nice and weighted down along with some batteries and so again like I said that's what it kind of looked like um, and, it, and it makes it really has helped from the initial foam that I laid down I had to actually re-glue and reposition because it didn't uh, it didn't attach you know cleanly after that obviously you know it's old hat at this point I laid the road bed down um, to finish the curve coming out of that bend where the wall kind of juts uh, and then after that I went through and laid the track and again this was as far as I got in my work this week in part because without the terminal strips I really didn't want to move forward with the wiring um, and so you know that's as, that's as far as I wanted to get but you can see here um, there's there's a lot of you know there's a lot of track uh, there's not a lot we can do with it yet um, but there certainly is a good amount of track. So one thing I did want to work on um, was really try and step up uh, trying to map out what operations would look like. I knew that one of the operations pieces was going to be dropping off some intermodal cars at the future Amazon distribution site. So I managed to find some of the Jacksonville Terminal Company's uh, 53 foot Amazon Prime containers, which is really cool. Uh, and then I decided it was time to really like map it out and actually kind of practice running through you know what a hypothetical obsession might be so i got out the uh, harvard station as a stand-in for arlington heights just to have something visual to look at uh, and then i set about kind of building what this session would be so i my plan at least initially is to use a, a four times fast clock meaning that you know 60 seconds of operate of ops is four four kind of simulated minutes and so you can see here that i've got uh, a number of different trains that I've got planned out for an hour of operating um, and uh, 15 trains would come through the layout in an hour basically uh, and so that's what I wanted to map out uh, and I figured I would show you exactly what that might look like so this would be August 19th 2013 it's a Monday morning uh, and the first train to roll past uh, Arlen the Arlington Heights station would be a Milwaukee, Racine, and Troy uh, train using its trackage rights. It's heading up to hit a couple of different uh, grain uh, grain operators, including Richfield on the CNW, and then uh, a grain elevator on the actual MRNT. So this is moving through at 7:50 in the morning, or as far as the op session is concerned, just a little bit of minute past. After that, there's kind of a lull in activity in this part of the layout. But about seven minutes later at 8.19 a.m., uh, you would have one of the inbounds, Metro 638, uh, coming in, heading in towards the city, because obviously that'll be where a lot of the traffic is, because it's, it's in the morning. Although it's mid-morning, which means there's going to be some more gaps versus if it was seven, six or seven o'clock in the morning. I'm experimenting how long I want these trains to stop at the station. This was about, a, I think, a 10-15 second stop. Um, but pretty quickly, pretty quickly after 638 heads out, uh, you're going to see, and it's two minutes later in real life, uh, only 30 seconds later in ops time, the 617 outbound is going to be coming in on the far left track as it heads as it heads out uh, through, uh, it's running through its route. Four minutes later at 8.25 or 10 minutes into the operating session, 
you would have CNW 401, one of the outbound trains, uh, one of the outbound 400 trains heading to Madison. Obviously, it's not stopping, it's just passing through, um, but it's passing through on the center track, so it's not concerned about all of the metro activity happening in the morning. After that, uh, a few minutes later, 8.33 in the morning, or 12 minutes of into the operating, um, the Janesville Proviso intermodal train is going to make its way uh, inbound or eastbound, however you want to phrase it, heading towards Proviso with a, with a fresh load of intermodal containers. Um, this is just going to be a pass-through. There's not gr really going to be an ops uh, opportunity with this train. Uh, it's just going to be running through the layout, which, again, is a lot of what I want to see. Um, you know, I just enjoy seeing the trains run through run through the layout with some operations mixed in you know to keep to keep things interesting but after that freight takes an advantage of you know a kind of a gap in time uh, at 8:49, uh, about 15 minutes after that passes through or 16 minutes in the op session inbound metro 640 would make its way in to arlington heights on its way to hit all the other stops going into Chicago. And again, I'm, I'm trying to test out how long I want this to go. You know, do I break a little bit of the, of the, of the clock speed? You know, you want to have some kind of a pause. Again, the gaps between the metros are going to increase just because as you get deeper into the morning, there's less of the rush. So at 919, uh, or 23 minutes into the op session, you're going to have inbound Metro 642 make its stop at Arlington Heights. And as it departs and heads towards Chicago, there will be another inbound train, although it's going to be on the center track. And not even a minute after departure, um, or 15 seconds in the op time, uh, you'll see CNW 402. This is one of the inbound 400s heading in from Madison. And again, it's not operating at its fullest speed at this point. Uh, it's only cleared to go about 60 miles an hour, which is about the same speed in real life that the Metra Express trains go, um, which is why I picked that speed for it to operate on. After the, after the 402, uh, not even a minute later, uh, Metro 619, an outbound Metro, makes its way to Arlington Heights uh, to stop and unload there. And one of the things that I'm pleased is I've kind of measured the distance of the layout and timed things. I, my trains are going to be able to run pretty close to prototypical speeds and make its way through the layout without really having to make major adjustments. The helix between the two levels really helps make that happen, um, but I really didn't have to modify the op session timing between the, th the three metro stations that I'm going to put on the layout and the actual time that the metro trains would take to get from Arlington Heights all the way up to Crystal Lake. And again, that's largely thanks to the helix I'll be putting in and how much time it'll take the trains to get through there. After that metro, the local is going to take advantage of a gap in time and it's going to make its way up to go serve uh, some, of the, some of the industries on the layout. So this is the one of the Proviso Janesville jobs because it does go up and interchange at Janesville. Um, I did manage to get a, a Kato SD45, which I'm very excited about um, because I figured that'll be another good uh, locomotive to lead the local operations. I, I plan on weathering the heck out of it because it, by you know 2013, obviously, uh, it's it's been around for a minute, um, but it's slowly making its way up. Remember, there is a second uh, lumber facility on the layout that needs to get served, so that's why this is going. That's why these center beam cars are on the outbound uh, because Heller Lumber gets served by the inbound local. Those are going up uh, farther up the Harvard sub. Uh, to go drop off fresh supplies there. Uh, and again, after that, it pauses and it interchanges at Harvard, and then it goes up and makes its way makes its way over um, to Janesville. You can see a little bit of a jump on the train there. Uh, again, I haven't had a chance to lay the feeders down there, so it's just it's a real spotty electrical pickup at that point um, where those trains are going. After the locals move through this area, and again, I want to remind you that, you know, 
once I get more built, I mean, there's full operations going on farther up and down the layout. I'm just picking one specific spot to give you an idea of what the traffic might be. But at this point at 1019, almost almost an hour after the local passes through the area, uh, inbound Metro 644 makes it stop at Arlington Heights. And at this point, Metro is basically running um, an inbound and an outbound every hour. You know, the morning rush has stopped. So now you just have an hour regularly tra regular train coming through. Uh, and, and they pair them pretty close together, or at least at this point uh, on the on the northwest line, uh, they intersect pretty closely. So at 1019, the inbound stops at Arlington Heights, and then literally two minutes later or 30 seconds later on layout time, uh, the outbound 621 makes its way up the line, you know, and stops at Harvard. The last freight operation in this mid-morning op session uh, that would be entering the fray uh, would be the reverse intermodal jobs. So this is um, this will be the Proviso Janesville uh, run, and this one, however, will feature uh, some degree of operation. It's not just going to be an intermodal freight that's passing through the scene, and that's because this will be the one that serves the Amazon. Uh, the Amazon distribution center that I mentioned, uh, and so as you see, um, as you as you see the intermodal pass through, uh, the first three well cars are the have the prime containers um, because once it moves around to where that siding is, it will cut run those three down, pick up any empties, attach you know attach them to the train, and then make its way up to Janesville. But after that intermodal makes its way through, there's just two more quick metros. Metro inbound 646 at 1119 uh, goes through, makes its stop for the for the mid morning run, and then a couple of minutes later, in real time or 30 seconds later, in operations time, uh, the metro outbound 623 makes its stop at Arlington Heights. And again, the timing's different for these, you know, locomotives. Uh, based on where they hit different parts of the layout. But I figured it'd be a fun thing to show you just from the perspective of one station, uh, how much traffic could happen in the course of uh, an hour of operating or in the real world, you know, essentially four, uh, four hours of, of traffic. And so even though there's light freight traffic because of the metros and the 400s, there's quite a bit going on. So again, that was kind of my first draft of what I want a mid-morning uh, weekday operation to potentially look like. I'm still fine-tuning, I'm still adding, uh, and any feedback would be appreciated. But otherwise, tune in next week as I continue to work on the layout. Make sure to comment and like and subscribe, and uh, see you later, everybody.